I'm making a game in 3 minutes, 30 minutes, and 3 hours. That's obviously not a lot of time, so today we're going to see what's possible in that short time. For the first 3 minute game, my goals are very simple. I just want to create a player, I want to create enemies, and I want the enemies to be killable. For me, that is the absolute baseline minimum of what a game needs. Now, can I do all of that in 3 minutes? Well, let's find out. Okay, so the first step is to make the artwork for the archer. I make this little guy here, resize him, and that's good. Next up, I gotta make the arrows, and very simple, but gets the job done, and you can see I'm already a minute into it. I start working on the logic for the arrows, and that takes another 15 seconds. You can see me typing in here. Halfway through now, uh, time to make the enemy, so here's a little angry guy. Basically, he's just gonna move straight to the left, and that's it. In the last 30 seconds, I have to make it so that the arrow actually kills the enemy, so I add that in. And with about 10 seconds left, I just decide to add some green ground to give it a little better appearance. And with that, development is done. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so you can't aim the arrows and that is a bug. Uh, with three minutes, I did not have time to do any play testing, so I'll fix that up real quick and there, this looks better now. So that's it for our three minute game. With that being done, let's go ahead and jump right into the 30 minute one. So with 30 minutes, I definitely have time to be more deliberate about my goals. So what I'm shooting for is to have better artwork, better physics, more enemies, and the ability for the player to die. Artwork is super important, so I'm basically dedicating the first half of this project to the artwork. Now with 30 minutes, I don't have time to create original assets, so instead I'm going to be licensing stuff. 13 minutes in, this is what I have. A little archer with a bow that can aim, a little castle for him to stand on, and a looping background. Next up, I'm going to start working on the arrow, and when I said that I wanted better physics, this is mostly what I was talking about. Um, I don't want the arrows to just go in a straight line, I want them to actually fall with gravity. So you can see that I've uh, made that here, and it's much more satisfying to shoot. There's a little detail that I wanted that isn't totally necessary, but I wanted the arrows to actually stick in the ground, so I just took a few minutes to add that. Okay, next up I'm making the new enemy, and uh, like I said, I'm not creating any original assets, so for this one I ended up having something generated by AI, and it came up with this cool floating skull monster that doesn't look anything like the existing artwork, but I like it, so I'm keeping it. By the way, real quick, how do you guys feel about using AI this way? Are you for it, against it? I know some people have some strong concerns about the ethical implications of using AI. I have not done any research on this, so if you have strong thoughts, uh, let me know in the comments. Getting back to business, I have three minutes left and the enemies are just about done. Um, they're at a really satisfying place where you can hit them with arrows, it sticks in them, and then after a couple shots they die. And I added a spawner so that they'll just keep coming instead of there only being one in the entire game. We're in the last minute now and we still have one pretty major task that I put off. We still need to make it so that the tower can be hurt. So I make a basic hitbox, I apply it to the tower, and I basically just make it so that any time an enemy touches the hitbox, the tower is destroyed. Um, so it's not very complex, but we're in the last few seconds, so it is what it is. Alright, let's take a look at the final product. So as you can see, this is a major upgrade on the 2 minute game. Uh, the big difference I think is the artwork, but the improvements in the gameplay are also pretty substantial. The one thing that I think this game is most lacking is probably audio. Looking back, it might have been worth it to spend some of the time that I spent on artwork uh, creating audio for this game, but I guess that's just something I'll say for the next game. Which we're doing right now, this is the next game, here we go. So you'll notice that I'm not starting out with the 3 hour timer, I'm actually picking up right where I left off with the last game and just continuing from there. Since I have a little more time again, uh, my first goal is going to be to improve the feel of the archery mechanic. So if you look back at the last game that I made, you can tell that it's definitely lacking some polish. Uh, you can shoot infinite arrows and there's no sort of animation for it, and aside from the arrow sticking into the enemy, there's no visual indication that they've actually been hit. And since this really is the essence of this video game, I want this to be satisfying, I want it to feel good, so I'm gonna go back, add an animation to the archer, as well as some visual feedback for the enemies. Okay, so we're 25 minutes in now, and I've added a little animation to the archer, also added a cooldown so you can't just spam arrows like you could before, and then I gave the enemies this cool knockback effect with a little bit of blood splatter. So I'm happy with this, let's move on to the next objective. The game definitely needs another enemy, so I went back to AI to create a buddy for our skeleton monster. 
And again, the AI created something that I really liked. Um, it made this kind of banshee looking monster. So I got to work on adding him to the game. My basic concept for this is that the original skull monster is going to be the slower, kind of stronger monster that comes in at the bottom level. And then this banshee is going to be a faster, harder to hit monster with less health. So it's definitely going to add some much needed variety to the game. But now we have a problem. For our enemies, we have these two horrifying monstrosities, and the background no longer fits. Something's gotta change. I took the next half hour to totally revamp the artwork, and honestly there was nothing wrong with the previous artwork, and a lot of people will probably say that they liked it more, but I think that in order for a game to stand out it does have to have its own unique theme and art style, and since I already had that horror theme going on with the enemies, uh, I just kinda rolled with it, and at the very least it is more memorable now. I spent a couple minutes experimenting with some visual techniques to make the arrows more visible, and then I took a full minute to stare at the code to try to figure out why it wasn't working properly, and by the 48 minute mark I was feeling pretty good about where the game was. And now it's finally time to start working on the audio, so I spent the next 30 minutes looking for good music and sound effects. After finding a ton of really great resources provided by online creators, here is what the game sounds like. Okay, so we're coming down to the wire now, we only have a few minutes left, and I still have one major task. I need to make it so that the tower doesn't just disappear when it's hit. Instead, I want it to take a few hits, and then after its health is out, I want it to crumble into the ground. But unfortunately, a couple last minute bugs are keeping this castle from crumbling. With under 4 minutes to go, I decide to entirely scrap the physics behavior of this castle, and basically start from scratch. Now with that finally finished, the last thing that I wanted to do was find a nice sound effect for when the player got hurt, but time was running down too quick so I just had to wrap up what I had and call it good. Alright, so to recap, in three minutes I was able to make the most simple game imaginable. Bare minimum graphics, bare minimum gameplay, simple as it gets. In 30 minutes I was definitely able to take it up a notch. This looks like a game that somebody might actually play. And here's what I was able to accomplish in three hours. Alright, well that's going to do it for today. If you are interested in playing this game, it's available on my website. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But aside from that, that's it. Um, this challenge was a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I'll see you around next time. Bye.